what's up guys welcome back I hope you guys are doing well today uh, we are gonna be going over the real cost of owning a bearded dragon in 2020 I did a little bit of research before this video and there's so much information out there about what the right supplies are to get um, how much everything costs and I think just in general people who don't know about reptiles think that reptiles are like an easy cheap pet to keep and that's just really not the case uh, most reptiles cost a lot more money to not only purchase and set everything up but in like the long run they're gonna cost more than what the average person might think so um, I made some notes so if you see me looking down that's what I'm referencing I really don't want to forget too much in this video so without further ado we're gonna get into it if you guys have any questions or anything please leave them down in the comments below um, I'd be happy to answer any questions to the best of my ability and let's get into it So I need to start this video off by saying this is not a care guide. Um, maybe I'll make a care guide in the future, but this is not a care guide. Um, this is going to be an informational video for people who want their bearded dragons to thrive and not just survive. There's many different ways that an animals can survive in our care, but personally I don't have an interest in having an animal that I can't provide an absolute great life for. Um, I love my huge enclosure that I have for Atlas. I can't imagine him being in anything smaller. And that goes for any other reptiles that I decide to get in the future. I really want to be able to provide them with the absolute best care. So with that in mind, um, you can cheap out and get the cheaper items, but this video is not for those people. So um, I also want to say that Everything will be cheaper secondhand. If you can find an enclosure, um, your light fixtures, you maybe find some light bulbs secondhand. Like there's lots of things that you can find secondhand that's gonna make this experience a lot cheaper for you. But these prices that I'm gonna be going over are just store prices or just kind of the average cost of the item as a whole. Um, and also just a reminder, if you are going to get things secondhand. You just want to make sure that you are disinfecting everything really well as to not cross contaminate with your dragon and whatever reptile you were getting that person from. <sighs> the first thing that you would buy, or actually this isn't the first thing you would want to have the enclosure first, but obviously the bearded dragon uh, is going to cost money. I do not support buying reptiles from chain pet stores like Petco or PetSmart, nothing like that. Um, you can get a cheap reptile from there and sure some of them will survive and there are definitely animals who have come from those places and have lived a happy life. Um, Atlas came from there. I personally didn't get him from there. I got him from somebody who had gotten him from PetSmart. And, uh, I just don't support the mass breeding of reptiles like chain pet stores do. Um, that's a whole nother video. There's lots of information out there if you don't know, but basically I don't choose to support um, buying animals from chain pet stores like that. I think that we can do a lot better. Um, so your bearded dragon is gonna cost anywhere from like 60 to even a couple hundred dollars depending on the morph. Um, of course, there's lot, tons of different morphs out there of different bearded dragons. Um, if you can't find um, a bearded dragon that needs rehoming, I would definitely suggest finding a reputable breeder, um, someone who has a good track record and someone that you're gonna be able to contact if something's wrong with your dragon or um, if you just want some more information. I think that like um, a smart, responsible breeder is um, the next best option if you can't find one that needs rehoming or if there's a specific type of dragon that you're looking for. The next thing you're gonna need for a bearded dragon or any reptile that you have is a temperature gun. Um, you can find a temperature gun for 10 to $20 depending on where you're getting it from, but this is a must have for any reptile owner. If you have no interest in getting a temperature gun, in my opinion, you don't need to have any reptiles. This is important because if you have a reptile um, like most who are going to need a basking spot, you want to be able to take the exact temperature of the basking spot. Um, a lot of the kits that you can get with the bearded dragon enclosures or reptile enclosures will come with a little circle 
thermometer that you like put on the wall and that's okay for measuring the ambient temperature of the entire tank but you want to make sure that you're not burning your reptile and the lights can get really hot depending on um, the basking spot Example, I have two different pieces of wood that Atlas can bask on in his tank. One of them is a dark wood that is going to absorb heat a lot more and that one gets really, really hot. I actually had to stop using it with my new light bulb that I have because the, the spot gets to be 130 degrees and that's way, way too hot. 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, way too hot of a basking spot so um, if you have something that's a little bit lighter colored like I have now um, it's not gonna hold as much heat and something like that might be a little better suited for your enclosure but um, regardless you're gonna need a temperature gun that is a non-negotiable no matter what another expense that you're gonna want to be prepared for is vet visits um, you want to take your animal to the vet once or twice a year if they're healthy god forbid anything happens to them and they get sick and you need to keep taking them to the vet but each vet visit depending on which vet you go to i've seen some people um, can go see an exotic vet for fifty dollars an appointment and some people are paying 200 to 250 for an appointment so that's going to kind of depend on your location and um, the type of vet that you're able to find um, most vets will have someone on staff who is somewhat knowledgeable on reptiles but um, also, you might have to make a pretty decent drive for a, a reptile vet if you don't have one close to you. Um, that's something that really can't go without being done. Some people think that you don't need to take your reptiles to the vet ever, but um, definitely not if they're like acting healthy and everything seems fine. Um, I personally think that you do need to get a professional's opinion if you're not comfortable judging an animal on yourself. Um, but also there are some things that we can't do at home that they can do with the vet. So use your best judgment, but minimum you need to be prepared for um, at least one vet visit a year. And again, that's going to cost you between $50 and like $250 depending on where you go and where you live. Um, another huge expense, very important, is going to be your enclosure. So again, this is going to be cheaper secondhand. Um, now, if you have a baby or a juvenile bearded dragon, they can be okay in a 20 gallon long tank, not a short one. Um, a 20 gallon long tank until they're maybe six months, like eight months is even pushing it. Um, I really don't even recommend buying a 20 gallon tank. I would really only use it if you have one already. Um, if you're gonna get a bearded dragon, I think you should just start off by buying a 40 gallon tank. That is gonna be the minimum recommended size for an adult. Um, if you get a bearded dragon and you spend your money on a 20 gallon, you're gonna be completely wasting your money because you are gonna to need to upgrade. Um, like I said, minimum for an adult bearded dragon is gonna be a 40 gallon, but even that is really small. So um, that is gonna to need to be upgraded eventually too. The best recommended size for a bearded dragon is gonna be a four foot by two foot by two foot enclosure. So that's four feet long, two feet tall, and two feet deep. Um, so they've got a total of eight feet of floor space and then whatever height you decide to add to their enclosure. Um, that's gonna be really important. Bearded dragons are not small lizards and they need a lot of space. Um, think about it, if you were locked in a box your entire life, you'd probably want that box to be pretty big and pretty luscious. So again, they can survive in a 40 gallon and that's what I would recommend for um, like a smaller dragon. But as your bearded dragon gets older, um, you are gonna wanna upgrade to the biggest tank that you can provide available doesn't necessarily have to be a four by two by two that's the equivalent to a 120 gallon um, I've seen some people have really nice like 75 gallon or like a hundred gallon tanks um, you could definitely do something like that too but um, again I wouldn't do anything smaller than a, a 40 gallon that's even for like a baby or a juvenile so I'm gonna say an enclosure is gonna cost you between two and three hundred dollars um, my enclosure that I have is from Zen Habitats I believe it was like 330 or 350 like somewhere around there but again that's the tank that he is going to live the rest of his life in and it's got plenty of space for me to redecorate it's got plenty of space for him to run around and it really is a great size for um a lizard that's the size of a bearded dragon so two to three hundred dollars minimum for an enclosure again cheaper if you find it second hand but you're, this is what you're going to need to expect to spend for an enclosure for an adult bearded dragon
I also want to say don't waste your money on the like reptile habitat kits that they have at chain pet stores. Um, I really don't go to chain pet stores for anything. I buy my insect feeders online and I really only go to the pet store if I need to get cat like cat litter and that's only because they sell it in bulk and I can refill my container. Um, but other than that, I wouldn't really suggest supporting them at all. Um, but especially don't get one of those like reptile kits. A lot of the items that come in there aren't good. Like I, I want to say they come with like, um, like calci sand, which we know is not a good substrate for any reptile. Um, they come with the little temperature gauges that go on the wall, but again, you're going to need a temperature gun anyway. And those, um, they're kind of obsolete. You don't really need them. Um, and yeah, the kits are just a waste of money. So I really wouldn't spend any time or energy. You're gonna be spending more money in the long run getting the correct items that you need rather than just getting them in the first place. So don't get the kits. And then um, another huge, huge, massively important thing for bearded dragons and most reptiles are gonna be lights. Um, they need possibly three lights, definitely two. Um, they're gonna need a heat lamp for basking. Um, that's just gonna be um, a light bulb. I use like a floodlight that you would put outside um, Something that is hot enough that it's gonna give them a basking temperature between like a hundred and a hundred and five um, I've heard babies can go a little higher personally Atlas didn't really um, like his temperature really high so we tend to stick around like a hundred degrees for a basking spot um, And again, you're gonna need your temperature gun to measure that spot. So they need a heat lamp um, they're also going to need UVB. This is so extremely important. Um, you do not want to get a coil UVB that's just like a regular light bulb size. You absolutely need to get the long tube light um, to go with their enclosure. This is not something you can cheap out on um, and it's, it is not cheap. The light bulb for UVB is going to cost you like $25, $30 and then the fixture that you're going to need for the UVB is going to be um, again around like $35, $40. So, for just UVB, you're gonna be spending around $60. Your heat lamp is gonna be um, anywhere between, I'll say five and $15. I generally like to get a double pack. That way, if one happens to burn out, I know that I always have like one on deck that I can substitute whenever I need to do that. So um, your heat lamp, your UVB, and then if your house happens to get colder than 65 degrees Fahrenheit at night, you're gonna wanna get a ceramic heat emitter, which is a light bulb that doesn't produce any light, it just produces heat. So a lot of times they'll be like black or white colored, but there's no light coming from it. Um, and again, those are gonna cost you probably around seven to $10 for just the light bulb. And again, for all three of these lights, you're gonna need fixtures. So um, you can buy brand new ones for like 12 to $25, depending on where you get them and what size you get them. So um, your lighting is gonna be a pretty decent chunk of the overall cost of having a bearded dragon. And that's not something that you can cheap out on at all. That's really important for their overall growth and their bone development. They absolutely need these things. Um, but again, the ceramic heat emitter is not necessary. If your house um, doesn't get that cold at night, they really only need that if the temperature is gonna drop beneath, it'll drop beneath 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, otherwise they're gonna be just fine. Another thing with your UVB lighting is um, your UVB bulb needs to be changed every six months um, because it loses its efficacy, efficiency, efficacy. It loses how strong it is over time. So that's not something that you can just keep like until it burns out. Um, it does lose its effect. So um, you're going to be spending $25 for a new bulb every six months. So that is another um, important expense to prepare for. Okay, now we're going to talk about substrate. So um, this is really controversial in the reptile community as we know, but um, in my opinion, if you have a baby or a juvenile bearded dragon, um, they should not be on any loose substrate. So you're gonna wanna keep your babies on either paper towel, which I personally don't suggest because I think it's a little wasteful and bad for the environment. So I choose to get um, non-adhesive shelf liner. I just get that from the Dollar Tree. Um, when I had Atlas in a smaller enclosure, I was able to buy just one roll and it was a dollar, but now in his bigger enclosure, I need four rolls, but even still, $4 for substrate is very, very inexpensive. And 
I like the shelf liner because I can um, just wipe it off or you can um, kind of throw it in the sink and scrub it off. But usually when I'm spot cleaning, I'll just like clean up his poop and then wipe it with, I'll take one paper towel and kind of wipe everything down with um, a vinegar solution. And um, that's gonna be just fine for keeping it clean in between like deep cleanings when you can take the mats out and like scrub them and um, kind of further clean them. So that's my best recommendation, even for like adult bearded dragons. Um, if you choose to do a loose substrate, um, it's gonna cost you between like 15 to $20 a bag, kind of depending on which substrate you decide to go with. Um, this is not a substrate video. Um, to be honest, I haven't really looked into loose substrates because I don't have an interest in putting him on a loose substrate right now, maybe in the future, but for right now, um, we just use shelf liner. So that's what I would suggest. People also do tile. That's going to cost you between um, 7 to $25, depending on how big your enclosure is and how much tile you're going to need to like cover the space or however you want to like decorate it. So um, overall, substrate isn't too expensive unless you go with a loose substrate, but there are uh, many different options to consider depending on what you're looking for and what you think might work best in your house. Um, another thing you're going to need is a food dish to feed your bearded dragon. Um, you're also probably going to want to get tongs. Um, I got tongs for like six or seven dollars, I think. Um, if you're comfortable handling bugs, then feel free. You do not need to spend this money. But personally, I don't have an interest in touching the bugs. So I got a long pair of stainless steel tongs. And um, again, those cost me like seven dollars. But for your food dish, um, if you choose to buy them from a pet store, it's going to be between like 10 and 15 dollars. And personally, I think that's a ripoff because there's plenty of things I personally have in my house that I can use for a food dish. Um, I, you know, you can use a little, a little glass dish that you have, or I've even used like the lid of like a pint of ice cream, you know, just like a small little dish, like something that you can clean out and it'll hold bugs. It doesn't have to be fancy unless you want it to, then you can definitely pay full price for a food dish at the pet store. But I wouldn't get too hung up on this. Um, again, it can be up to free or up to like $15 depending on where you get it from. Um, I get my insect feeders from a company called Rainbow Mealworms and they sell a little, um, a little dish. It's like that big and it has a plastic lip on it. It's called a no escape feeder dish or something like that. So basically it's built so the bugs can't get out. Um, regardless, I don't leave bugs in the enclosure. I make sure that they're all taken out, but um, that is still something you can use to keep the bugs contained. And that feeding dish is only, it's literally 50 cents. So those little plastic dishes you can get for really cheap or just do something at your house and then you won't even have to pay anything. You also might notice I didn't mention a water dish and I'm not gonna mention a water dish because I don't use a water dish for Atlas. Um, bearded dragons are known for not drinking still water. So there are um, these really cute like reptile waterfalls that you can get for your bearded dragon. Those are gonna cost you between 40 to $50. I do not have one of those. Um, maybe one day in the future that might be really cool to get. But for now, um, Atlas gets his hydration through his food and also um, through baths, they have um, a little like vent near their butt that they can absorb hydration through. So when you're giving them a bath, they will take in some hydration as well as whatever they get from their like insects or from the veggies that they're eating. So I'm not gonna include the cost of a water dish, but I am gonna include the cost of a bath um, I personally choose to use a Tupperware. I got it from like Walmart. I think it was like two or three dollars. Um, just like a little plastic box that I have designated as a bath for him. Um, mainly because I don't feel like cleaning my bathtub or cleaning my sink every time I want to bathe him. So I'd rather just have um, his own little like bathing box that like he can use. And then he does drink in the bath as well. So that's another way to get hydration. And then anytime you're giving any reptile water, um, whether it be in a bath or, um, oh, I also have like little glass droppers. Um, you can get little glass droppers from Amazon or any kind of like pipette that you can kind of suck water up into and like drop the water in front of them. Um, he has totally drank like that before and I know a lot of reptiles will do that who don't like drink still water. So you can get some glass droppers. I wanna say they're like five or $10 for like a big pack of them on Amazon. 
so you can do that but anytime you're giving a reptile water you need to make sure it has been treated with Reptisafe or some sort of water dechlorinator so they're not taking in um, the chlorine and um, you know the like gross chemicals that are in our water that's gonna be a little too um, much for the reptile to handle so anytime I give him a bath or anytime I like um, sometimes I'll leave water in his veggie dish so that when he's eating veggies he'll kind of get some extra water and it also helps to keep the veggies from drying out under the heat lamps but um, that all needs to be treated with Reptisafe or again like a water dechlorinator I don't know if there's another kind so I just get Reptisafe it's like seven to ten dollars a bottle depending on like what size you get but that is um, absolutely necessary everything in this video is necessary um, uh, with the exception of decor, um, all of this stuff is stuff you're really going to need if you want your bearded dragon to thrive, like I said. Um, you can get by with the bare minimum, but we're not here for that. Something else you're going to need for your bearded dragon is some sort of reptile safe cleaner. Um, I personally use a mix of vinegar and water. Um, my vinegar has been infused with some sort of citrus peel like lemon or orange so that way it doesn't just smell like straight vinegar. Um, but also I do take him out of the tank anytime I have to like wipe that down. So even though it is safe for him, um, vinegar doesn't smell great so I don't want to just trap him in the tank with a bunch of vinegar smell. So um, you're going to need something like that or like Dawn dish soap. Um, you know, something like that that will kill bacteria um, without harming your animal, obviously. Um, there's also a cleaner called chlorhexidine um, that is widely known in the reptile community. I had to look up how to say it because I personally haven't used it. I haven't had Atlas for very long and like I said, I use vinegar and soap and kind of things around the house, but if you would rather get an actual reptile cleaner, you can get a bottle of chlorhexidine for like $15 and I'm not sure if you dilute that or not. Um, so you're gonna wanna look that up before you use it. I have no idea how to use it. Um, I've also heard you can use Listerine, like the original Listerine mouthwash, um, and that's really good for killing bacteria as well. And then you're also going to need paper towel, something to clean, but you probably already have that, so that might be free. So overall, you know, your cleaning products aren't going to cost you too much, but it is still a necessary expense. You are going to need something to clean the tank. Um, also vinegar and water is good for um, cleaning like glass and cleaning the water spots so that's that's my best recommended cleaner um, you can get a whole gallon of it for like two or three dollars so that's what I would probably go with and then obviously if you have a bearded dragon with a cool enclosure you're gonna want to put some really cool decorations in there um, decor can cost you so much money it's it's really expensive to buy reptile decorations from like pet stores or things like that. Um, I would suggest trying to go to like a dollar store first to try and look for some fake plants. You can almost always find like fake greenery at, um, you know, like a Dollar Tree or Family Dollar, things like that, even fake like little planted pots. Um, I eventually want to build up um, a little platform in Atlas's enclosure with some bricks from the hardware store because um, they're really cheap. They'll um, hold a heat well. They'll help file his nails down. Um, I'm going to be moving in a couple months, so I don't want to do that just yet. But um, bricks are another great thing you can use as decoration. Oh, what are you looking at? What do you see? So decor can cost you as much or as little as you want. Um, like I said, start at the dollar store and then maybe whatever you don't find at the dollar store you can go to the pet store for so um decor i'm gonna say will cost you between like 20 to 30 dollars depending on how much you want to get how luxurious you want it to be the sky is really the limit so now that we've talked about all the stuff you're gonna need to get your bearded dragon um there's also the monthly cost factor um you are gonna need to get regular um, shipments of insects, um, shipments I say if you're getting them online obviously or if you have like a reptile shop or somewhere near you where you can 
get beer and sex, that's great. Um, I don't have a place near me that has really good prices, so I, I get my beer and sex online. And uh, again, this is a monthly expense. Um, that was one thing that, it's like I knew how much bearded dragons could eat, but like you don't know until like you're really in it. So I got Atlas when he was a juvenile, but he was, um, severely underfed so when I got him I needed to kind of do some making up for lost times um, baby bearded dragons need to be fed three times a day as much food as they will eat in a 10 to 15 minute time period so um, it's not like you're giving them just like 20 bugs at a time like you are giving them 50 to 100 bugs at a time letting them eat whatever they will eat. Set a timer on your phone. Um, you're gonna let them eat as much as they will eat in a 15 minute period because that's really their important stages where they're growing and um, their body is developing. So Atlas will be um, a little stunted on his growth because he didn't eat enough when he was smaller. So um, if you don't have your own feeder insect colonies that you have started, um, you're gonna need to buy a ton of insects if you have a baby or a juvenile. Um, and you need to keep buying them until your dragon is older and that definitely can cost a lot of money. Um, we'll say roughly, and this is a very rough estimate, um, some dragons will eat more, some will eat less, but um, an average like baby bearded dragon can eat up to like a thousand insects in a week so if you're having to buy all of those insects and you're having to buy them regularly that's gonna cost you roughly 80 to 150 dollars a month that's just for insects and again that can cost you more or less depending on like where you get from I suggest starting your own insect colonies before you even think about getting a reptile. I know it's it's not ideal. I didn't do that, but I wish that I had. And I've already kind of decided that I really can't get any more reptiles until I have some sort of colonies established because it's just so expensive to keep feeding reptiles if you have to keep paying someone else to breed your bugs for you. So. Um, maybe I'll make a video on like um, breeding insects when I get into that, but that's definitely something that I want to pick up in the future. Um, so babies need like 80% bugs in their diet and 20% veggies. A lot of times they won't eat the veggies, but you still want to make sure you're offering it to them. Um, some of them will eat it and some babies really like their veggies and some won't, but it doesn't matter. You always need to be offering them veggies. Um, vegetables and fruits for a month for a bearded dragon who's a baby and is not really eating them is probably gonna cost you like five, maybe $10 a month. And then when they're adults, their diet will switch. So they're eating roughly 80% veggies and 20% bugs. So um, your cost will change a little bit as they get older. They do get a little bit cheaper to feed, but again, you still have to buy feeder insects if you are not breeding your own. So to feed an adult bearded dragon is gonna cost you roughly 50 to $80 a month in insects if you're buying them. And then veggies are gonna cost you between 10 to $20 depending on what you're getting. Um, you can buy some vegetables in the freezer, you can buy some fresh, that's kind of up to you. And then um, you're also gonna need to get calcium and a multivitamin. Those are both powdered supplements that you put on top of the insects. Um, they absolutely need them. You cannot skimp out on these, especially they need calcium for their bone development and they need their UVB light so that they can absorb the calcium and apply it to their bones so that they can grow into healthy, strong bearded dragons. Um, another like unexpected cost that I didn't really think about when um, I first got Atlas, I knew that he was eating crickets at the time. I don't feed crickets now, that's a whole nother thing. Um, but I kind of did the math for how many crickets I would need to feed him for a month so that I, I, I thought that I could just get away with ordering bugs once, once a month when he was a baby. And um, I ordered a thousand crickets and didn't realize they wouldn't come in their own box. Like I had never ordered 
bugs like that before. Um, so you need you need to have like a, a housing situation for your feeder insects and you do need a variety of feeder insects. Currently, I have dubia roaches, I have super worms, I have giant mealworms. Um, a lot of times I'll keep phoenix worms or black soldier fly larva and then like little treat insects too you can have. But um, each one of these insects are gonna need their own home. Some insects require um, heat, some need to be kept in the refrigerator, some need to be fed, some don't. Um, most times you're gonna want to gut load your insects, meaning you're putting veggies in with them so that they are taking in nutrients and then they are passing the nutrients on to your bearded dragon when um, they eat them. So that's something that you're you're gonna need and most people don't think of is housing for your insects and also you are gonna need to give them a little bit of food, but most of the times you can just give them uh, kind of scraps, but that's still an important expense that you are gonna wanna prepare for. Okay, so we went over a ton of stuff just now. I realized I didn't add any of this up before, um, so I just had to pause the video and do that and the total cost of owning a bearded dragon in 2020, this is not including monthly expenses, like monthly occurring expenses like food or if a light bulb goes out, um, general maintenance, things like that. Um, this is not including regular vet costs, although I did throw in the cost of one vet visit in there. Um, This number even shocked me. I knew how much it was gonna be. Like, I, I, I just did this in the last couple months. I like got all this stuff for him. And again, a lot of this stuff is gonna be cheaper if you get it secondhand. But um, the overall cost of owning a bearded dragon in 2020 is gonna be between $800 to $900 for the setup, for the bearded dragon, for lights. Um, the longer you have them, they are cheaper to have, of course, because you're not having to buy all new enclosures, um, assuming you didn't start out with a 20 gallon long tank, like I said, and you bought their forever home first, um, which saves you money in the long run. This definitely could cost you a, a lot more money if you just buy a bunch of temporary items and then just upgrade. Um, it may seem like a good idea to do that if you don't have a ton of money right now, but um, unfortunately the reality is if you can't afford to get the necessary things for an animal, you really shouldn't be getting that animal in the first place. Um, there's always exceptions to every rule or whatever, but as a general principle, please do not get an animal you cannot afford. Um, I knew what I was getting into when I got Atlas and I knew where I was gonna get everything and I've learned a lot of things on the way too. It's, it's always a learning curve. So that's how much it costs to own a bearded dragon in 2020. 800 to $900, that's a lot of money. Um, again, please don't, don't think that reptiles are a cheap, easy pet. Um, bearded dragons are pretty expensive. Some reptiles are cheaper and some can be a, a lot more expensive. So um, just keep that in mind. If you are thinking about getting a bearded dragon for a pet, I really hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions as to how I broke down the average cost, um, if you have any questions about anything, where I get anything, I am gonna leave some links in the description box, but um, please, if you have any questions, I would love to help you out to the best of my ability. I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, I'm also on Instagram, um, at Lex Reptiles, um, and I'm pretty active on there as well, and I hope to be making some more YouTube content in the future. Um, I really hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful. Um, I hope you are all doing well, um, considering this crazy stuff that's going on in the world right now. Um, we got this, guys. We are, we got this. We'll get through it. We're tough. It's, it's no big deal. We'll hair flip to that. Um, <laughs> oh my God, okay. I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe and taking care of yourselves. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.